Josh Hamilton had one of the sweetest swings this game has ever seen. With speed, arm strength, and raw power, Hamilton was one of the league's best players in the late 2000s and early 2010s. He put on a show in one of the most unforgettable home run derbies to date. He also tied an MLB record with a single game performance for the ages. On the game's biggest stage, he delivered one of the most clutch home runs in franchise history. However, there's another side to Hamilton's story that shortened his time in baseball. His struggles with alcohol and drugs robbed him of a potential Hall of Fame career. Thank you to everyone for the suggestions and make sure to leave a comment on who you want to see next. As always, if you enjoy, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at cam23 underscore YT and hit the bell to enable all notifications so you don't miss any future Cam23 videos. Joshua Holt Hamilton was born on May 21st, 1981 in Raleigh, North Carolina to parents Linda and Tony. Josh attended Athens Drive High School and was a two-way star. In 25 games during his senior year, Hamilton batted 529, hit 13 home runs, drove in 35, and stole 20 bases. On the mound, his fastball was clocked at 97 miles per hour. As an outfielder, he could run, throw, and hit the ball with authority. He was the undisputed best high school player in the country. The only question was whether he'd be drafted as a pitcher or a position player. The Tampa Bay Devil Rays selected Hamilton as an outfielder with the first overall pick of the 1999 MLB Draft. He signed for nearly $4 million. The teenage phenom, with virtually no limitations, immediately found success in professional baseball. As an 18-year-old in 1999, he batted 312, hit 10 homers, drove in 55, and stole 18 bases. In 2000, he was promoted to single-A ball and continued to perform well. He batted 302 with 13 homers, 61 RBIs, and 14 stolen bases. He was selected to play in the MLB-hosted Futures game, showcasing young stars expected to one day be at the center of baseball. In February of 2001, Hamilton and his parents were in a car accident coming home from a spring training game. A dump truck ran a red light and T-boned Josh's pickup truck. His parents sustained serious injuries and returned home to North Carolina for treatment. Josh experienced back pain that kept him off the field. Without his parents around and the structure of baseball to keep him focused, he lost his sense of direction. He coped with his problems by sitting in a tattoo parlor and getting two or three tattoos a day. One night, in a moment of weakness, he resorted to alcohol and cocaine as a way to escape. Weeks later, he met with a sports psychologist to talk about how he was mentally handling his injuries. After admitting cocaine use, the team sent him to rehab. He left after eight days and went back to playing baseball. In 27 games that year, he batted 200 and hit just one homer. Hamilton was able to get clean in 2002, but got hurt again. The vicious cycle repeated. He surrounded himself with the wrong people and fell back into addiction. It was around this time that he met businessman Michael Chadwick, who helped guide Josh during his recovery over several years. Through their relationship, Hamilton met Chadwick's daughter and his future wife, Katie. The couple would have three daughters together. In 2003, Hamilton failed his first drug test during spring training. Once the season began, he showed up late several times and was assigned to minor league camp. He left and came back multiple times, but eventually took the rest of the season off for personal reasons. It seemed likely that 2004 would be the year to get back on track until he was suspended the entire season for violating MLB's drug policy. He went to rehab several times to get things under control. Before the 2005 season, Josh was arrested for smashing the windshield of a friend's truck. He was placed on the restricted list and removed from the Rays 40-man roster. Another relapse resulted in MLB suspending him for the entire 2006 season. In October of 2005, Hamilton hit rock bottom. He had separated from his wife and didn't know where to turn. In a moment of desperation, he showed up at his grandmother's home. She took him in and allowed him to stay in a spare bedroom. In his first week of sobriety, Josh experienced horrific nightmares. He found comfort reading Bible verses and in praying to God. Mets legend Dwight Gooden could relate to Hamilton's struggles. Gooden reached out and offered some advice. Hamilton later said, I think it's a good thing to talk to people who know what the temptations are like and the pressures are like to be a pro athlete. Josh and his wife soon reconciled. Roy Silver, a former minor league outfielder and manager, played a big role in Josh's return after three lost seasons. Silver allowed Hamilton to use his baseball facility in Florida in exchange for janitorial and field work. He even slept on an air mattress in one of the offices. Starting in June of 2006, MLB allowed him to attend minor league workouts with the Devil Rays. 
Before the 2007 season, Hamilton was left off the 40-man roster and was selected by the Chicago Cubs in the Rule 5 draft. For those who may not know, the Rule 5 draft allows for teams to select players who are not on a 40-man roster. His time as a Cub did not last long. He was immediately flipped to the Cincinnati Reds for $100,000. To ensure he wasn't still doing drugs, MLB mandated that Josh take three urine tests a week. After playing 11 games in AAA, the Reds promoted Hamilton. At 26 years old, he made his MLB debut on April 2, 2007 as a pinch hitter. The fans celebrated his inspiring story with a lengthy standing ovation in his first at bat. Hamilton nearly got his first hit, but left fielder Matt Merton robbed him with a diving play. April 10th was Hamilton's first start. He batted leadoff, played center field, and recorded his first hit, a two RBI home run. He homered the next night, added four more during the rest of April, and won Rookie of the Month honors. Hamilton was sidelined for two extended periods of time, but performed well when he was on the field. In 90 games, he batted 292, hit 19 homers, drove in 47, and was 31% better than league average according to OPS+. In National League Rookie of the Year voting, Hunter Pence, Troy Tulowitzki, and Ryan Braun, who won the award, were the top three finishers. Hamilton did not receive a single vote. After the season, the Reds had concerns about his long-term health and durability. In late December, Hamilton was traded to the Texas Rangers in exchange for Danny Herrera and Edinson Volquez. In 2008, Josh Hamilton was the starting center fielder and took the American League by storm. In April, he batted 330, hit six homers, and drove in 32 runs. He was named AL Player of the Month, which he repeated the following month. In May, he batted 322 with eight homers and 29 RBIs. He became the first player in AL history to be awarded Player of the Month for the first two months of the season. In the first half, he had 21 homers and drove in 95. He was on pace for 160 RBIs, a feat only achieved 21 times in a single MLB season. Hamilton was invited to participate in the Home Run Derby and earned his first All-Star selection. At the time, the rules of the Derby were that each player would hit as many home runs as possible before reaching 10 outs. An out was defined as a swing that did not result in a long ball. In New York, Hamilton stole the show. With 8 outs, he had 15 bombs. Then, he went 13 straight swings with the homer. He set a then record with 28 big flies in a single round, the longest of which traveled an astounding 518 feet. To put that into perspective, the next highest single round total in the Derby was nine by Justin Morneau in round two. Hamilton's first round was so memorable that it's hard to believe that Justin Morneau ended up winning the event. The next day, Josh was the starting center fielder and batted third in the American League's all-star lineup. He went one for three with a stolen base. Hamilton was unable to keep up the historic RBI pace, but still had an excellent second half. On August 17th, 2008, the Rays intentionally walked Josh Hamilton with the bases loaded. He became the second player since integration to receive the Barry Bonds treatment. One swing could have tied the game, and manager Joe Madden wasn't willing to take any chances. His decision paid off as the next batter, Marlon Byrd, struck out to end the game. Hamilton finished the year with a 304 average, 32 homers, a league leading 130 RBIs, and a 135 OPS plus. He also led the league in total bases with 331. He won his first Silver Slugger and placed seventh in MVP voting. Josh Hamilton's perseverance had finally paid off. In 2009, Hamilton was plagued by an abdominal injury he suffered in May. He underwent surgery and returned in July. His offensive numbers took a major hit. Despite this, he made his second All-Star appearance. In August, word got out that Hamilton had relapsed back in January. He went on to finish the year with disappointing numbers. In 89 games, he batted 268 and hit just 10 homers. There was reason to doubt that he could replicate his success from a year prior. In 2010, Hamilton took his game to the next level. He emerged as the best hitter in baseball. He put together a 23-game hitting streak from June 4th to June 30th. In that time, he batted an insane 457 with 9 homers and 29 RBIs. He won the AL Player of the Month honors for June. Overall, he had an unbelievable first half. He batted 346, hit 22 homers, and drove in 64. He made his third All-Star team and had an even better second half. In just 48 games, he batted 384 with 10 homers and 36 RBIs. In early September, while making a catch, he crashed into the right center field wall. He fractured two ribs and missed a month of action. He returned for the final three regular season games and finished the year as the front runner to take home the MVP. 
Only 18 times has a player hit 400 or higher versus right-handed pitchers in a single season. In 2010, Hamilton hit 401, the highest since Tony Gwynn in 1994. No one has done it since. With an AL best 359 average, he won a batting title. He also led the league in slugging, OPS, offensive war, and total war. In 133 games, he had 32 homers, drove in 100, and posted a 170 OPS+. All time, 30 players have had a season where they batted 350, hit 30 plus homers, and drove in 100 or more. A majority of this group are Hall of Famers. In 2010, the Rangers won the AL West division, and Hamilton played in October baseball for the first time. The Rays were their opponent in the division series, and the Rangers were able to advance. After Game 5, Texas celebrated with ginger ale instead of alcohol so that Hamilton could participate. He greatly appreciated the gesture. It was the coolest thing for my teammates to understand why I can't be a part of the celebration, and for them to adapt it for me to be a part of it says a lot about my teammates. The Rangers played the Yankees in the championship series, and Hamilton came alive offensively. In Game 1, he had a three-run homer and stole a base. In Game 2, he walked four times. Two of those were intentional, and he stole two bases. In Game 3, he had another homer. His two-run shot proved to be all the run support they needed as the Rangers shut out the Yanks and took a 2-1 series lead. In Game 4, Hamilton homered in the 7th and 9th innings to punctuate a 10-3 win. The Rangers lost Game 5, but were able to advance to their first World Series appearance in franchise history with a 6-1 win in Game 6. The Yankees intentionally walked Hamilton three more times to bring the total to five in the series. In the six games against New York, he batted 350, hit four dangers, drove in seven, and stole three bases. He was named ALCS MVP. The Rangers matched up with the Giants in the Fall Classic. Unfortunately, Josh's bat went cold and they fell to San Francisco in five games. After the postseason, Hamilton's amazing regular season was recognized. He won his second Silver Slugger and was rightfully voted the American League MVP, beating out Miguel Cabrera for the award. 2011 was a trying year for Josh Hamilton, and it had nothing to do with alcohol or drug abuse. In April, he injured his arm sliding into home plate and missed more than a month of the regular season. He returned to have a great first half and earned his fourth All-Star nod. In Arlington, Texas, on July 7th, Hamilton tossed a foul ball into the outfield stands. Firefighter Shannon Stone was trying to catch the ball for his six-year-old son Cooper, who was with him. Shannon fell 20 feet over the railing and ended up going into cardiac arrest as he was transported to the hospital. Tragically, he passed away. Hamilton and his teammates were not aware of what happened until after the game was over. Being associated with this heartbreaking event was devastating for him. In 121 games, Hamilton batted 298, hit 25 homers, drove in 94, posted a 130 OPS plus, and received MVP votes. For the second consecutive season, the Rangers won the West Division and rematched the Rays in the ALDS. Before Game 1, the late firefighter's son Cooper threw out an emotional first pitch. The Rangers were able to advance to the championship series and played the Tigers. Hamilton drove in five runs, but Nelson Cruz carried the offense. With a 15-5 win in Game 6, the Rangers advanced to their second Fall Classic in as many years. The Rangers played the Cardinals in one of the most thrilling World Series in recent memory. In Game 2, the Rangers trailed 1-0 in the ninth inning. Ian Kinsler and Elvis Andrews set the table for Josh Hamilton and Michael Young. Each hitter drove in a run via a sacrifice fly to give the Rangers a 2-1 lead, and they went on to win, tying the series. After a Game 3 loss, Texas won back-to-back -back ball games, needing just one win to secure their first title in franchise history. Throughout his career, Hamilton found great success when he swung at the first pitch of an at-bat. On the first offering, Josh put his team up 1-0 with an RBI single in the first inning of a roller coaster Game 6. After several lead changes, the Rangers were up 7-5 in the ninth inning. However, the Cardinals were relentless. Albert Pujols hit a double, and Lance Berkman took a walk. With two outs, David Free stepped to the plate in the midst of an astonishing October performance. He fell behind one and two, and all-star closer Neftali Feliz needed just one strike to close out the series. Fries hit a clutch, game-tying two-run triple to send this game to extras. In the top of the 10th inning, Elvis Andrews singled up the middle to bring up Hamilton. Entering the sit back, he'd been homerless in the postseason. On the first pitch, he got a fastball in his wheelhouse and crushed a go-ahead two-run blast. The biggest home run of his life gave the Rangers another chance to seal the deal. The Cardinals miraculously assembled another impressive comeback. Down to their final strike again, 
Lance Berkman hit a clutch single to tie the game. In the 11th inning, David Freeze smacked a walk-off home run. This soul-crushing blow forced a Game 7. Hamilton started a rally in the first inning with an RBI double, and Michael Young quickly drove him in. In the bottom half of the inning, David Freeze erased it with a two-run double. The Cardinals took the lead in the third, and the Rangers were held scoreless the rest of the game. Texas lost their second straight World Series in heartbreaking fashion. In February, Hamilton suffered another relapse. Both instances in 2009 and 2012 occurred before the season began. Without baseball as a distraction, the ongoing battle with addiction presented itself more prominently. Josh was able to shake this off and had an electrifying first half to the 2012 regular season. In April, he batted 395 with 9 homers and 25 RBIs. In May, he batted 344 with 12 dingers and drove in 32 runs. May 8th was the greatest offensive display in Hamilton's career. Facing the Orioles, he tied an MLB record by hitting 4 home runs in a single game. He went 5 for 5 and drove in 8 of the Rangers' 10 runs. He set an American League record with 18 total bases, falling one short of Sean Green for the Major League record. The home fans gave him a standing ovation. The next day, Hamilton and the Rangers hilariously turned Camden Yards into a slip and slide during a rain delay. Hamilton's torrid run in April and May earned him AL Player of the Month honors in back-to-back -back months for the second time in his career. In the first half, Hamilton had 27 homers and 75 RBIs. He made his fifth consecutive All-Star team, but went ice cold in July. That month, he batted 177 with just six extra base hits. Josh felt that quitting tobacco mid-season contributed to the slump. He felt more jumpy and tried to do too much at the plate. He recovered offensively to finish the year with a career-high 43 home runs. He batted 285, drove in 128, and posted a 141 OPS+. The AL West division race came down to the final day of the regular season. The Rangers were unable to beat the A's and were thrust into the first ever wildcard game against the Orioles. The O's allowed just one run, courtesy of Joe Saunders and a lights-out effort from the bullpen. Texas lost 5-1. After the postseason, Hamilton won his third Silver Slugger and placed fifth in MVP voting. He also became a free agent for the first time. In December, he signed a five-year, $125 million contract to join a division rival, the Angels. This deal was incredibly risky. He was a soon-to-be 32-year-old who had already been through so much, both physically and mentally. With Texas from 2008 to 2012, he averaged just 129 games a year. Albert Pujols and CJ Wilson joined the Halos on massive contracts the previous year, so getting Hamilton felt like the final piece to a formidable team. After all, he'd walloped 142 homers and drove in 506 runs in a five-year span, amounting to 28 and 101 per season, respectively. Sadly, the high expectations for Hamilton never materialized. In 2013, he stayed on the field but declined in overall production, batting a career-low 250 and slugging just 21 homers in 151 games. 2014 was an injury-plagued campaign. A thumb and shoulder injury limited him to just 89 games. The Angels won the AL West and played the Royals in the ALDS. Hamilton went hitless in 13 at-bats as the Halos were swept. This nightmare performance, combined with a 263 average and a 115 OPS plus in the regular season, did not justify his $25 million salary. In February of 2015, Hamilton underwent shoulder surgery. During recovery, he relapsed into drug addiction. When the Angels caught wind of this news, there was speculation that they were looking to trade the former MVP. On April 27th, they traded him back to the Texas Rangers. Hamilton spent some time rehabbing in the minor leagues and made his MLB return on May 25th. Three days later, back in Texas, he received a standing ovation during his first at bat and hit a double. The next day, he went two for three with two home runs. On October 3rd, he had another multi-homer game. These two games accounted for half of his home run total in 2015. The Rangers won the AL West and faced the Toronto Blue Jays in the division series. Hamilton struggled, going three for 18 in five games. After winning the first two of the set, the Rangers collapsed. The Blue Jays stormed back to win three straight, capped by a Jose Bautista bat flip. In 2015, Josh was a shell of his former self. In 50 regular season games, he was a below league average hitter for the first time since his injury riddled 2009 season. He missed the entire 2016 season after getting his third knee surgery in under a year. 
the Rangers released him in August. In 2017, Texas signed him to a minor league deal. The team planned to have Hamilton try out as a first baseman. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, as he had pain in the same knee that was surgically repaired the previous season. While rehabbing the left knee, he injured his right knee. On April 21st, the Rangers cut ties with Hamilton again. The mounting injuries led to the unceremonious end to his playing days. For his career, he posted a 28.2 war, batted 290, mashed 200 homers, drove in 701, and posted a 129 OPS+. He was a five-time All-Star, three-time Silver Slugger winner, won a batting title, was the 2010 ALCS MVP, and the 2010 regular season MVP. He spent just nine years in Major League Baseball. He is one of the greatest players in Texas Rangers franchise history. In 2019, Hamilton was inducted into the team's Hall of Fame. Hamilton has said that since retiring, he has stayed sober, but unfortunately, trouble found him again. In October of 2019, he was arrested and charged with a felony after assaulting his daughter. In February of 2022, he pleaded guilty to unlawful restraint. Josh Hamilton's fall from grace, rise to superstardom, and second downturn is one of baseball's saddest stories. He had the potential to be one of the greatest players we have ever seen. At one time, winning control of his demons, Hamilton recorded incredible numbers. With a late start and early departure from the game, who knows what numbers he could have achieved. Cooperstown might have been calling. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on the video. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.